This is trigonometry, section 4.3. Right triangle trigonometry. So our objectives is that we're going to use our calculator now to start evaluating some of these different trigonometric functions. We're also going to introduce some new identities, and then we're just going to model some different problems. One of the big problems that we're going to start using are special right triangles. So if you remember special right triangles from Algebra 2, great. If not, we will be reviewing it. So what your book likes to do is they've already given you the unit circle and now we're working our way down to kind of how that unit circle was developed. If you remember from Algebra 2, we studied the triangles first and then from the triangles we created the unit circle. So we're just kind of going a little bit in reverse and I think that's what a lot of college textbooks like to do. So whenever we're looking at a triangle, we want to make sure we know what is the angle that is our reference angle. What is the angle that all of the sides need to be in reference to. That will tell us which side is our adjacent, which is opposite, and which is our hypotenuse. These are the six trigonometric functions, and I know that we've already tr uh, covered these, right? Our, our main one, sine, cosine, and tangent, with the acronym SOKOTOA, we can remember what all of those different ratios are. Um, and then sine is partnered with cosecant, cosine partnered with secant, tangent partnered with cotangent, and by partnered I mean it is just the reciprocal. You'll notice that each of these fractions is just taking the flip or the reciprocal of each of those values. Special right triangles, so your book likes to identify them this way. So a 45, 45, 90, your two sides are equivalent. So let's call them X, right? This is an isosceles right triangle. Since I have two angles that are congruent, I have these two sides that are congruent. And instead of writing it this way, your book likes to write it square root of 2 times X, which right, we always like to put the number before the variable. I always like to write it as X square root of 2. Because as we solve these in real world problems, or just write application problems, we're going to have a number there. So I want to make sure we understand that the number, the whole number, the integer value, that should go outside of the square root. And for our 30, 60, 90 triangle, across from your 30, that's your x. Across from your 60, that's your x square root of 3. I like to write it that way. And then across from your 90, which is your longest slide, is 2 times x. So all of these sides are in proportion to each other, just like these three sides are in proportion to each other. And memorizing these proportions will help you. Uh, for those of you that are juniors, it will significantly help you on the ACT. The ACT likes using these proportions because it doesn't necessarily require you to use your calculator. So let's do some examples. So right here I have a 3, 4, and if you're not sure what the hypotenuse is, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem to solve it, but the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. It's just a favorite of everything. Everything is in relation to our angle theta here, so that tells me this is my opposite side, and this is my adjacent side. And it's asking me to find the six trigonometric values for theta. So if I want to find the sine of theta, right, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so four-fifths. And since we're here, let's go ahead and do cosecant of theta. Because all I really need to do is take the reciprocal. Sorry, that's a CSC. Our next one, let's find cosine of theta. That's adjacent over hypotenuse, or three-fifths, and that's partnered with secant, which is just five-thirds. Last, we have the tangent of theta that is opposite over adjacent, OA, so it's four-thirds. That tells me that my cotangent is three-fourths. I'm, I'm thinking we probably have a good handle of those, right? We've done a lot of those as well. I will often give you a triangle uh, and you'll have to find the missing side, sometimes using the Pythagorean theorem, and don't be afraid. If there is a square root in any of these sides, that's okay. Do not round to a decimal. Keep them in their exact values with the square root. So let's find the values of sine of 45, cos of 45, and tangent of 45. But let's do it using a triangle. Meaning, if I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, that's one of our special right triangles. Let's make the sides equal to 1. If the legs are equal to 1, then my hypotenuse is 1 square root of 2, or just square root of 2. And if you're not sure, right, you can always check using the Pythagorean theorem. But we want to use those special right triangle relationships, because those will come in handy. 
the sine of 45 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Well, let's pick a 45 degree angle. Let's label these just to make sure that we don't mix anything up, which one's the hypotenuse and which isn't. So the sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, and I can't have a square root in the denominator, so I wind up with a square root of 2 over 2. Now I encourage you to get out your unit circle, because what is the sine of 45 degrees on your unit circle? It's the square root of 2 over 2 and it comes from this special right triangle. The cosine of 45 degrees is the exact same thing, right? It's adjacent over hypotenuse, and then I have to do the same thing, get rid of the square root in the denominator, so I get the square root of two over two. Last but not least is the tangent of 45 degrees, TOA, opposite over adjacent, well, that's just one. Now, as you remember, on your unit circle, if you look at the cosine of 45 degrees, it will also say the square root of 2 over 2. And when we're using our unit circle to find tangent, we often do sine divided by cosine. Well, what's sine divided by cosine? Since these two are the exact same value, then the tangent is going to be 1. Now let's look at a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And I, I chose this example just because sometimes, right, our, our special right triangles may be hidden in bigger pictures. So just know, if you have a special right triangle, there may be some other geometric figures going on around it, but we can still use those proportions. Let's start with 60 degrees. I'm gonna label my opposite, my adjacent, my hypotenuse, and let's find the sine of 60 degrees. So the sine of 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. Go ahead, check on your unit circle. Is the sine of 60 degrees opposite, square root of 3 over 2? Absolutely it is. The cosine of 60 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, and looky here, it matches exactly to what our unit circle says the cosine of 60 degrees is. Now let's switch, right? Now let's switch to 30 degrees. Now in order to switch to 30 degrees, I'm going to erase all this, and I'm going to relabel my, my, ref, my angle, right? Everything has to refer based on this, so that tells me this is now my opposite side, and this is now my adjacent side. So the sine of 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine of 30 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. And you can double check again. These values are exactly the same as what we see on our unit circle. Notice that 30 and 60 degrees, these are complementary angles. Do you kind of see the relationship there? These complementary angles and their values. Lots of patterns when it comes to the unit circle and these special right triangles. If you want to start kind of memorizing these, there is a Quizlet linked on Google Classroom because I'll tell you what, it might help you. Everybody kind of learns the unit circle a little bit differently. If you want to memorize some of these values, not a bad idea. So you can practice that Quizlet using the flashcard settings. This is just a kind of an idea. We just I just mentioned it about the complementary angles. These co-functions of complementary angles are going to be equal. So when you see these patterns, don't second guess yourself. It is true. That is a, there's a reason why these are special right triangles and they have these types of relationships together. All right, so your book likes to jump into something that this kind of doesn't fit with the others, I feel like, uh, a lot of the, the, the stuff that's going on in this section, but they want you to evaluate five degrees, 40 minutes, that's what this first dash means, and 12 seconds, which is basically saying, you know, if I were to measure a five degree angle using a protractor as a human person using a pencil and a protractor, I probably can't get any more precise than five degrees. But say you're working in the military and you're setting up something that you want to launch and you want to make sure it hits the precise location based on airspeed and wind resistance and all of that. You might be able to program into a computer to fire said what, whatever it is you're firing to focus in even more minutely than a de degree. And I know that's kind of weird to think, because as the human eye, 
it would be hard to tell the difference between a 5 degree angle and a 5 degree 40 minute 12 second angle. But computers can do that type of technology. So it's important that we understand kind of what these units of measure mean. So what is 40 minutes? Well, think about the fact that a degree, right, if we go around the unit circle once, and in one hour, okay, in one hour, how many minutes are there? Well, there's 60 minutes. How many seconds are there in an hour? 3,600 seconds. So if I want to figure out this, this value, it's not 5.0, it's going to be 5 plus 40 over 60 plus 12 over 3,600. So it's going to be a much smaller, it's going to have a decimal expansion. So let's put that into our calculator and see what that value is. All right, so we get 5.67, right? So this is 5.67 degrees. That's what we're looking for. And we want to calculate the secant of that. Well, to do secant on our calculator, we don't have a cosine. We don't have a secant button. We have to use cosine. So here is how you type it in. You're going to put a parenthesis first, type in the cosine, and you could put this whole thing in if you want, but we already know it's 5.67. And then I want to do to the negative 1, which is the x to the negative 1 button. It's the button right below the math button. And you want to make sure, notice right, everything we've been talking about so far is degrees, so make sure your calculator is in degree mode, right? If the question has degrees in it, you have to be in degree mode. So when you do that, you should get out, you're going to, we're going to have to round here, about 1.005. And please let me know if you have any questions with that on the calculator, I can definitely show you. All right, moving on to kind of a, a new topic, brand new topic, trigonometric identities. So we're going to start taking some of these things that we know um, and, and kind of writing them down as formulas. Now, on your test, I will be giving you all of these trigonometric identities. By next unit, you will have to memorize at least these. These are very fundamental, what I would consider basic ones. But for your first test, I promise to definitely give you these. The first ones are just the reciprocals, right? Because we know sine and cosecant are related, but they're, they're, they are the reciprocals. Here are the ones we've covered before. Tangent is sine divided by cosine. We know that. Well, if tangent is sine divided by cosine, then it's reciprocal must be cosine divided by sine. Now, these identities here, these are the ones that might be new to you. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 is one of the most fundamental identities. I see it more and more on the ACT every year. It seems like they like kind of introducing that identity because it's just a Pythagorean identity. <coughs> Excuse me. 